Howdy folks, Andy Social Podcast episode 13. Welcome to all. Hi to all of my new friends that are tuning in and greetings to all my old friends that are continuing to listen. Thank you so much. Just cutting straight to the chase. This episode is not brought to you by my Sean Kemp <laughs> Upper Deck 1993-94 trading card. Now, Yes, that's correct. I am doing another fake sponsor for an NBA trading card. A couple of reasons. One is that I really wanted to do this episode very quickly as far as the intro goes, and I didn't have enough time to go and find something else. But more importantly, I actually wanted to get some more trading card talk happening on this podcast. So uh, I think I might have to actually find a, a cool guest that uh, we can get into uh, a deep discussion on 90s NBA trading card talk. This particular card is part of a set. Um, it was actually part of the first, I think it was the first trading card I ever got, not Sean Kemp, it was another player. And I was obsessed with completing this this set, this 93, 94 upper deck uh, set of cards, but they were more expensive. Uh, the cheap and nasty cards were tops at the time and uh, they were quite easy to get and relatively cheap. And then uh, I, every once in a while I was able to be treated with, you know, a more expensive pack of cards like these ones. And I think they're actually about four or five dollars a packet, which back in, you know, mid nineties, early nineties, it was um, probably quite a bit of money to be honest. I mean, still would be now five dollars a packet of cards. Over the years, I ended up completing the entire set bar one card. And I was flicking through my folder of uh, this particular set of series one and two, and I've got every single card except for one. So part of this intro is a shout out. If anybody out there has any cards from this series, 93, 94 upper deck and has card number 106, which is Dan Shays. It's from series one. And if you've got that card, please get in contact with me because I will kindly take it off your hands. Dan Shays is not a popular player. It's probably not a terribly rare card to find, but for whatever reason, I just never came across it and it's the only card left of this set. Uh, I'm probably not going to lose sleep over not having it, but uh, I guess there's a little bit of underlying OCD there where I would probably feel a lot better knowing that uh, both Series 1 and 2 are, are completely uh, completely finalised. So uh, yeah, shout out to anybody out there in internet land if you uh, happen to rummage through some old trading cards that are collecting dust and you find that particular card, card 106 Dan Shays. I would be greatly appreciated. Please get in contact. And if somebody does get in contact and provides me with that card, I'll take a photo of it just to show everyone that it was a mission success. But uh, putting it out there for anybody who might be able to help. Now, Sean Kemp himself, I uh, actually quite enjoyed doing my little uh, background information on Stacey Augman. Um, Sean Kemp is another interesting character and uh, definitely got up to some, uh, some uh, interesting activities outside of his basketball career. He was definitely one of those players that was just extremely popular in the 90s. He played in the Olympic team. He went to the NBA finals, didn't win a championship, but started to move around to multiple teams. And he eventually just ended up vanishing from, from the NBA. And some of the stuff that he got up to and probably the reasons why he ended up going down that path that he did, it paints an interesting story. And I think it's just one of those wasted talents out there. He left such a massive mark on the NBA and he could have been even more than what, what he was. But anyway, I'll leave that till the end of the episode to give a bit of a, a rundown of what Sean Kent's been up to. And I'm sure people will get a bit of a laugh out of it anyway. So once again, this episode of the Andy Social Podcast is not brought to you by my 9394 Upper Deck trading card of Sean Kemp, card number 305. And just for your information, the entire set uh, series one and two, there was 510 cards in total. So when I was a young kid, that was a, an astronomical number. So I'm quite uh, shocked that um, I was able to complete the set bar that one bloody card. Anyway, moving along, this week's episode features uh, a guy by the name of Logan Gray. And Logan Gray might not ring a bell for a lot of people listening to the podcast, but uh, he is more commonly known or referred to as Thrash Wolf. And Thrash Wolf is a brand that he's created and is all around uh, art that he creates for bands, for 
all sorts of uh, different things uh, out there, commercial and whatnot. Very unique style of uh, art. And he's got a very, uh, very unique and uh, very much a trademark way of uh, creating his art. And I'll definitely have a lot of examples and references in the show notes for everyone to check out. But Logan's done a lot of artwork for a lot of Australian bands, especially in the metal scene and uh, some pretty fantastic stuff that's out there. And he's done some artwork for us, which hasn't been used. Um, and I, I touched on that very quickly uh, towards the end of the the podcast itself, but it's uh, something that I'm, I'm holding on to for a rainy day, but yeah, He's an extremely talented guy. He's pretty much living the dream as far as working for himself and living life on his own terms, and uh, and he's doing very well at it. So this uh, episode should hopefully... Uh, hopefully inspire a few people to make some big uh, decisions, make some changes in their life. If you're not quite happy with uh, with your day-to-day uh, comings and goings, uh, hopefully this might uh, inject a little bit of enthusiasm or inspiration to do something that you, you're passionate about and that you really, really have been sitting on for quite some time. But uh, hopefully this will, this will be enough just to at least get you started and get you moving in the right direction. Another heads up, this was recorded through Skype. Uh, I don't think the quality is too bad on it. I'm sure Damien will do a nice job cleaning it up, but uh, if he can't salvage the middle section, we'll do our best just to polish it up as much as we can. But uh, apologies in advance if it's a little bit jerky halfway through. But uh, a lot of cool stuff that we talk about. It's quite interesting. I'm sure you'll all get something out of it regardless of whether you know all the references or whether you're interested in art or not. There's a lot of cool things that you can take away from it. Anyway, uh, enough rambling on. Please enjoy Logan Gray. Well, thank you very much for uh, giving me a bit of time. That's all right. More than happy. Well, I think the first thing I've got to say is you pretty much you've pretty much done the artwork for the entire Australian metal scene over the last two years. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of <laughs> or at least appears to be. It feels that way, and like I don't know how I fell into it, but it's just like everyone's so close and. Like, I'm not complaining at all. I love working with the Australian metal scene. It's fucking rad. And everyone in it is fucking rad. And yeah, I feel I feel fucking like blessed, man. Like, it's so fun. Everyone has like gnarly ideas. Yeah, it's so good. It's crazy. Who's the first band that you did? Like, well, at least Australian band anyway. Uh, first guys, let's see. It was probably like Electric Dynamite. Was, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say that was a few years ago. Yeah, that was a while ago now. Yeah, working with like Dwayne, and then um, through them, Tabera from Yep, uh, yeah, Tabera. Yep, yeah. they're yeah, they've just always hit me up and put my shit out there like crazy, and yeah, they're always. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think they've um, they've probably paid for paid for your rent or or whatever oh, for probably the next few years with all the artwork that they've put got my fucking you. kids through school. I swear to God, if I had any, like. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah. Uh, I mean, Absolute it, legends. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, it definitely works with um, with the way that I mean, both for both bands, the way that they've sort of put their merchandise out there yeah. and the artwork just totally complements what they're doing. So it's really cool. Thanks, man. But, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's something that I've noticed quite a bit, and you've definitely got a trademark to to your style. That uh, you know, straight away, I'll see a band pop up with you know a new t shirt design or new like album cover or something. I go. Ah, uh, that has to be Trash Wolf. It has to be. <laughs> and then I go and read the the yeah the caption or whatever. I go, yep, yep, got it. <laughs> yeah, is it? I don't know. How did you get the style? Or was it just something that just came naturally after a Honestly, while? Or... Like I didn't do anything different. I kind of like everyone. Everyone learns how to do shit, and you know, like they learn how to. Uh, there are different like processes of work and whatever. And I don't know. This kind of just felt the most natural and like fun for me to do and like everyone has yeah like you can you can look at most different illustrators and be like yep that's their work and then you see their work out in the wild and you're like holy shit this looks like this guy's work and sure enough it is but it's like i don't know i think it's like after an x amount of time you kind of grow into like this niche of style that you you know implement into everything you kind of do and yeah, yeah like, absolutely. even absolutely. even if I don't try, like it still comes out looking like something that I've done. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's <laughs> it's like it's a blessing, but it's like ah, I love it. I can't complain. I get to draw fucking rad stuff every day. So, <laughs> and is it is it most is it more of a case that the bands will come to you and just say, hey, what have you got? Have you got something cool? Or are they coming to you and saying, hey, I've got this idea. Can you can you whip this up for uh, us? 
I've got a cup like I've got a bunch of different clients that go about it both ways to be honest and um and usually you know like every now and then I'll do like warm up sketches of like different compositions and whatever that you know kind of appeals to me at the time and I'll be like yo like this is for sale if you guys want me and it'll just be a sketch and so I'm kind of appealing to like these bands seeing like the final picture kind of thing and um mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's I usually have like a for sale album or something on my Facebook. And then I also, yeah, get hit up a bunch by bands going like, yo, I've seen your work. Um, are you able to do anything like this? And then they just shoot me some like reference stuff. And then, yeah, they just take it from there. That's like both ways, to be honest. That's how I work is both ways. <laughs> is it harder to try and, you know, capture whatever crazy idea that, a, that a, an artist has got to try and make it align with whatever's stuck in their head? Yeah, definitely. It's it's definitely harder, but I kind of enjoy the challenge of like trying to turn whatever's in someone's like brain, like whatever they've thought up that's like crazy or whatever, and try and translate that into like an image that they can use for merch or whatever their like CD layouts. So I, I definitely enjoy the challenge, but at the same time, the stuff that I do and work on um, myself, like my sketches that I sell or whatever to finish off to bands, it's got more of my own ideas behind it and my own like mm. imagery and stuff behind it so i kind of like feel a little bit more connected if you get what i mean yeah for it. sure where's the inspiration come from for your own ideas uh man <laughs> anywhere what everywhere. an open-ended question yeah <laughs> don't worry i've got heaps of time <laughs> <laughs> Everything and anything, man. Like from like shitty B grade, or like even like Z grade horror movies that are just filled with gore to like I've got some uh, like Japanese comics and stuff that I've been reading and um, like horror comics that are like yeah. really gnarly as fuck. TV shows, video games, like you name it, man. Like uh, shit. There's yeah. There's literally so much that I can uh, draw inspiration from, and that's, that's what I kind of try to do every day. Is like look at shit that makes me go, that's cool. I freaking like that. How can I, you know, use elements of this to implement it into my work or whatever? So that's probably the key. And I think, I mean, I especially forget about that. And I think a lot of other people do when you're you're desperately trying to get some sort of creative juice flowing Mm. and you're sitting there just staring at a blank page or a wall or or your guitar or whatever in front of you and you just go, what the hell's going on? Where is it? Where's yeah. this, you know creative flow? But if you're not exposing yourself to other stuff to get any inspiration, then oh, it's, you, yeah. you're only going to go so far. So you're yeah. doing the right thing, I guess, by by just immersing yourself in so many different things and different styles. Yeah, and, like one hundred percent get you. Like I can look at a blank canvas and just be like, shit. <laughs> like what am I going to do? Uh, I have no idea. And I'll do some like research and maybe like put together, if I'm like in real, like having real trouble with it, then I'll put together a mood board, which is basically just like a collage of random images that pertain to the subject at hand. And Mm. then I can like glance at it and kind of like reference it and try and mix and match ideas and make something, you know, like much more different and out there than I normally would. Or like uh, just to try and get a grasp of ideas in general, to be honest, because yeah, sometimes it doesn't come as naturally as other times. But in the end, like it all, there's always something that comes to my mind that I try and like relay back and forth with the clients. And then, yeah, they usually like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> <laughs> is it something that you try? I mean, if you don't have any current jobs going, is it something that you just try and do every day anyway out of habit just to kind of keep, keep oh, yeah. the momentum going? 100%. Like you can't stop. Like if you stop, then um, yeah, you kind of dwindle. Like uh, my old mentor once said, it's basically like riding a bike. Like you learn how to do it, you keep doing it, and then you're get, you get better and better. It's the same with like making art to be honest like if if you're out of it for like a couple of months you're gonna come back into it and be like shit like where do i start and then yeah it just kind of comes harder until you get full swing into it again it's just like you just it's like a muscle you just got to keep getting those gains (laughs) (laughs) to sound like a complete loser (laughs) do you even sketch bro (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, drawing for me is like it's just been one of those things I've been fascinated since I was a kid there used to be this guy I went to school with who was just he was a freak like he could look at something and just draw it straight away and, oh, man. and, the, only, and the only way that I could do it was actually get a really thin piece of paper and throw it over the top of the image and, and cheat by sketching like <laughs> you know tracing around the image and then drawing it after that yeah. but I've always like oh man I've just I've always fantasized 
about being able to draw and I, I buy all these fucking sketchbooks yeah. and I, I, I'm like all psyched. I sent, I've got my pencils and I'm like, all right, I'm going to draw. And then I just start like drawing shapes and then I realize it's not going anywhere. And so, <laughs> and so the book just gets thrown across the room and then I forget about that book. And then I get inspired again about six months later and buy <laughs> another one. And so I've got all these random books that have got like one page of shit in it. <laughs> And I had to keep telling myself, and it's, you know, you just confirmed it. If I just do it every day, yeah. then eventually something's going to come out and it, it'll, it'll, it'll be better than chicken it's, scratch eventually. Yeah, dude, it's like, it's like playing guitar. Like if you don't play guitar or whatever, like bass or drums for X amount of months, then you're going to have a freaking shitty time once you get back into it. Like it's not like you, you'll remember like, I don't know, like power chords and shit like that, but it's, yeah, uh, it's more intricate than that. And, um, yeah, dude, it's on the on the on the whole like your freak of nature friend that can like draw anything that he sees. There's like mm. two different kinds of drawing. There's like the drawing from your imagination, and then there's like mm. the drawing from like real life shit and like stuff that's around you. And yeah. I suck miserably at like life drawing and stuff like that. But when it comes yeah. to drawing from my like brain, I'll be like, yeah, whatever. Like I'll mainly just draws like skulls and shit, but <laughs> it's still <laughs> it's still so much fun. And I don't know, I enjoy that way more than um yeah than like still life or life drawing. I do enjoy that stuff, and it's very very useful to get like fundamentals and proportion and shit like that down. But it's pretty uh yeah they're pretty different in comparison. I guess there's probably a few more. It probably feels like there's more rules. And yeah. guidelines to follow with life drawing, as opposed to you know whatever's coming coming through yeah. your mind. I mean, th there's no rules then; it's whatever whatever you feel like. Whereas if you're trying to draw something like uh, you know to scale or, or whatnot, then you've you've really got a bit of a rule book to follow. Yeah, definitely. Just to uh, run off the back of what I was saying before about being this frustrated wannabe drawer, <laughs> I've had this sketch, this idea in my head. I had this nightmare when I was a kid, and basically what it is, and I've and I always struggle to describe it, but basically what it is is a giant empty aquarium tank mm -hmm. and uh, say the size of someone's bedroom. Yeah. And it's in this museum. There's nothing else in, in the room at this museum and there's a couple of people walking around it. And in the tank itself are about four or five foals, the baby horses. Yeah. And they, they've got no skin. They're completely like you know, stripped of skin. And you know how like uh, when a baby deer or, or you know, horse or anything like that is born and it can't stand up properly and its legs yeah. fall out all over the place, it's doing that, but there's blood all over the bottom of the of this like tank and it's it's slipping because it can't get traction. What the so fuck? and and I swear to God, I had this nightmare when I was a kid. I don't know where the fuck it came from. Seriously, man, that's and crazy. it's been stuck in my head, and ever since then I thought. One day I'm going to draw this, and I'm, it's going to be so cool. It's going to look amazing. Dude, that's and, brutal as hell. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just, it's, it's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it though. Like that—that's funny. As, oh man, like just having <laughs> that kind of like nightmare as a kid. Like what the I know. fuck? I don't know what Did I was watching. Girl, hey? watching, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Messed up childhood. Fucking yeah. So that just eats at me it's like you know how some people have ambitions to achieve greatness and and drive for, you know strive for success i've just yeah, got this fucked up image draw of fucked up, like, dead <laughs> yeah. it's just crazy so anyway i thought i'd share that just uh just i thought you might get a kick out of that one That's <laughs> Um, and I've got to ask, uh, with, <laughs> I'm quickly going to try and change, uh, take off, take off uh, from that tangent. That's but right. um, where did the name Thrash Wolf come from? Well, basically, like, I don't know, growing up, I loved, like, old school fucking party thrash. And you know, I was heavily into it. Now, like, not as much. Like, I still enjoy it. But um, I feel like I've got, like, a pretty all over the place kind of music sense now. Yeah, so that that comes with the thrash portion of Thrash Wolf. And then the wolf part came from just, I don't know, doing my own shit kind of thing. And I moved to Melbourne by myself and went to university on my own. And uh, I don't know, that just kind of stuck. And ever since, I've just been like, fuck yeah, run with it. And why not? And it's been, uh, it's been my business name for... What's that, like four years now? Well, I guess it's uh, it's a bit of branding, isn't it? So you may as yeah. well stick with it consistency. Exactly. And funnily enough, I mean, I, 
I, I don't know you personally, and we've only sort of chatted online uh, yeah. over the last you know, year or so. But um, I had no idea that you had an American accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you started speaking before, I went, oh. <laughs> And what year did you move over? Uh, 2000. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And was that with just yourself or uh, no, family? Family and my mom, we moved to Tasmania, of all places, and oh. yeah, from California. So that was pretty crazy. I was going to say, that's, uh, that's one world to another, literally. That's <laughs> yeah. just, uh, whereabouts in Tassie were you? Launceston. So. Okay. Oh, shit. That's... Um, that's, that's Slow pace. <laughs> yep, to say the least. Uh, yeah. But you know what? Like my my mom saw it more as like a, like it, it was safer because it was so much smaller or whatever. Mm. And, and yep. it's not really the case. Like you still get your like rampant bogans and stuff. But I guess every place has that. So uh, I, I, I didn't really uh, I don't know, chalk it up to just being like oh fuck Tasmania blah 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 or anything like that. Like it was <laughs> uh, it was rad. I couldn't have asked for a better like upbringing. And then yeah, it moved. Sure. Yeah, cool. It's um, yeah, Tassie is an interesting place because it's like probably one of the most beautiful places in the world as far as scenery and whatnot. But fuck, I've met some real oh, some uh, doofies, rough as guts people yeah. down there. Yeah, <laughs> it's sort of like you know when you get into rural parts of the world, like you know country towns and whatever, and just some people have just never left, and they're several generations in, yeah. and they just never <laughs> they've never gone anywhere but their little yeah. you know little suburb or their or their town or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like I was lucky because I kind of had that. Oh, probably not that much, but more worldly knowledge. So yeah, uh, I had like a bit more like respect instilled in me, and just like I don't know, I was more mindful, I guess, of uh, like my surroundings and shit, and just more uh, in tune with uh, I don't know, growing up and shit in general than a lot of people seem to be. But that said, yeah, I wouldn't have turned out like I am if i didn't live there so yeah for sure it's uh it's an amazing place and they seem to have a a pretty good university down there as well yeah. and uh yeah so it's uh definitely a nice place i know a few people that have actually decided to move down there because yeah the same. property and everything's so cheap down there to live and one of my yeah you know, one of my good art yeah. friends fucking just bought a house and moved down there <laughs> with his girlfriend crazy. that's crazy yeah it's it's just um i think that's happening everywhere in, in the country at the moment everyone's just getting the hell out yeah. of you know the big metro cities because it's just way too expensive to, right. to survive like, now to, yeah i want to move back in like give me that <laughs> um i've got to ask you with um with Thrash Wolf, mm -hmm. and I mean, you, you kind of hinted it before, but how do you get your name out there and get more work? And I know you said about, uh, you know, I asked you about, you know, catering for the majority mm -hmm. of the Australian metal scene, but it's definitely a word of mouth thing. And I'm oh, sure dude, having, it's... having your stuff on T-shirts definitely yeah. is like walking advertisements. But um, is there anything else that you do? Um, I don't know. I feel like good work is infectious. Like you give, all right, like it, I, I try to, treat every band or brand or whatever I'm doing the same amount of respect. Everyone's just a person at the end of the day. Um, all I want to do is make them as happy as I can be with my work. And then they usually go out of their way to, you know, like further my cause and be like, uh, I just, I'll just ask them if you know of anyone that needs work done, hit me up, like, let me know or let them know about me. And yeah, like so far, so good. Like, I don't know, I haven't been out of work for, you know, like four years. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's amazing. And I mean, word of mouth is, is, is still like, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. If you can get the right momentum with, with the right people to start off with. And, and as you said, like, you know, good work will ensure that you always have uh, have you know, work in return yeah. because uh, you know that that stuff spreads really quickly. Yeah. So you don't have to you don't have to whore yourself out as much. Because <laughs> it just speaks for itself. Yeah, and, and that's what I like. I don't I don't like big talking. I don't like you know, talking myself up or saying like I can deliver this or blah blah blah. Like I'll try. Like I'll be honest with what I can do. I don't like. I just want to let the work speak for itself. Like that's what I'm about. So. I don't know. It's like I, I get a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people I know that talk really big game but can't deliver, if you get what I mean. <laughs> it's a bit of compensating. Yeah, and it's like, why would you do that if they can clearly tell at the end of the day that you're talking shit? <laughs> but yeah. it's all good. Yeah, and, and I, I guess with something like that, you probably, those, those types of people are probably attracting you more lazy or uneducated or people that uh, are desperate for some form of work or job to get done. So they'll just go with anybody. Yeah. And the person who probably screams the, the loudest will probably get that work. Exactly. And that, 
but you know, you pay the price for it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So like, it's, I don't know, like I, I'll give everything I have to work on a hundred percent. I don't really care about anything other than the quality of what I give back. Like it's been paid back to me like tenfold. So I can't complain at all. <laughs> and, and you're on social media a fair bit as well. So I, I assume that that probably just helps, uh, yeah. in addition to, to word of mouth as well. A hundred percent. So I don't know, like Facebook kind of royally screwed over anyone that owns a page. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, you would understand. Um, Absolutely. And like, as those changes were just implemented, my like page started getting, I don't know, it was like a 2000 people like liked it or something. And I was like, hell yeah, like getting some, you know, traction. And it's like, oh, only 10% or like 20% of people can now see your posts. And it's Oh man, it was just a kick in the nuts. So I moved yeah. to uh, Instagram and I've actually got to be a bit more social on Instagram because I haven't been posting as much as I've uh, been wanting to. But that's because I've got so much shit going on. So I don't know. I can't complain. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, busy's good. Yeah. And if you've got the if you got the work and whatnot, then it's not as crucial to be. Uh, I guess you know, it's not that you're whoring yourself yeah. out, but you don't have to sort of you know do that advertising yeah. and, and ensure that people know where you are on social media. I mean, it's still a good thing to have. Oh, I, of course. I, I, from my end, I, I try and like Instagram is always something that I just signed up for just because I felt I kind of had mm-hmm. to just to cover all bases, and I didn't really use it that much but I've, I've upped the ante a little bit with it and i'm trying to do like i'm becoming a bit of an insta whore <laughs> and trying to do like a post a day even if it's just shit just yeah. just to kind of, kind of keep the thing moving keep people engaged and, yeah i get you man i get you 100 percent. and it's because yeah, facebook yeah, yeah it's because facebook sucks balls and because instagram anyone that scrolls by your thing is gonna see it that's it so you can post stuff at like peak times of the day and people will see it even when you are, are like inundated with work, like you have like shitloads of work, you just got to keep posting. And that's what I've kind of like lost track of, I guess. I don't know. I need to just hop back on the bandwagon, <laughs> the insta horror bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll I'll uh, I'll put a link to your Instagram account on the show notes for this, so yeah. it'll give you a bit of a uh, bit of additional motivation to <laughs> to get posting. But uh, it's it's hard. Like the social media stuff's really hard because it's so it's just so frantic and so instant. Yeah. And you know, people post and you get a reaction. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you've got to constantly be interacting and pushing the accounts yep. in order for stuff to be shown. And and Facebook's just so hard oh, now. Dude. And there's nothing there's nothing else out there that really sort of compensates for Facebook yeah. just taking such a dive. Yeah, I'm sure that'll yeah. change over time. I really but, hope uh, so because yeah, after that whole thing like fiasco where they started charging for you know views or whatever. It's just kind of, I don't know, it was just like a kick in the guts for most people that were trying to run their own business or were like just starting out in like a new band or something. It's like, cool, well, no one's going to see your shit unless you pay us. (laughs) That's it. And like we've got, we've got, I don't know, however many, like 20,000 on our page. And every time we post, we might get... 400 people that see a post and you think shit if if all 20,000 people who actually wanted to like our page saw that post we might actually sell a decent amount of merchandise we might actually get people that rock up to our shows and it's quite frustrating because they're there they're right there but you can't quite get to them but it's like dangling a carrot in front of you and just being like (laughs) yeah "Yeah, you want this you want this pay us (laughs) that's it but even the, the worst thing about it is even at times we've test it and going, all right, look, if we have to pay, we have to pay. And we chuck a few dollars down and boost a post. Mm-hmm. And either the post gets rejected because there's too much text in the picture. Such a low shit. Or, <laughs> you know, or there's something in there that doesn't quite meet their, their standards. Or it gets accepted and then you get a bunch of fake likes or, yeah. you know, fake stuff. And then you get no, or no one actually bothers to even check it out. Like it still doesn't show up in the feeds. Yeah. And you've got no proof to show that it's actually being legitimately promoted. Other than so, fair say yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're, they're analytical. Like, oh, no, no, no. Yes, it is being boosted. We swear. We swear. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Here's a random number that we're telling Look you. Look at this bar graph. It's very in-depth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after a while, you kind of go, well, you know, maybe this money could be better spent elsewhere. And yeah. you just kind of hope that, you know, enough people will uh, will keep sharing stuff around just to try and organically <laughs> get the posts out there. But it's, yeah, it's frustrating. So th- we just try and blanket approach, you know, Twitter and Instagram and whatever else and just hope that 
it's just enough to keep everything going, keep people yeah. connected. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's for I sure. I get you, man. I get you 100%. Off the back of promotion, uh, I think it was Comic Con that you, you've been to a couple oh, of times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Comic Con, and then there was like Armageddon, which is now. Uh, has changed its name to something else, which I can't recall. <laughs> um, and Supernova, I think it was. The yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, they've they've been fun as hell. Like just doing my own personal stuff and selling that, and um, yeah, it's it was super eye opening. Like meeting other artists, meeting other artists in like different walks of life, kind of thing, and like people that. You know, it kind of just makes me appreciate what I've got more because I feel like yeah. some days I can take for granted that I work on art all day as a job, whereas this yeah. is what these guys are like working towards. So it makes me more thankful for what I get to do every day. And like, I, I already am pretty thankful, but you know, seeing these guys produce amazing art, but having to work like another job just to support themselves is like, wow, like I feel blessed as fuck. You know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And is it, I mean, these types of events, because I've never been to one before, I just sort of see the, the mountain of photos that come through with everyone dressed up <laughs> and, and the stalls and everything. But when you go to these things, is is your intention to go there as a, as a networking event or is it like more of a market style thing where you, you're there to, to push and sell sell your art or uh, is it just a, a, little bit of, a bit of everything? Yeah, a little bit of both, to be honest. Like uh, I love meeting other artists. I love meeting, you know, like people that dig my art, just people even that, you know, have never heard of me and they come up and go, wow, like your stuff's sick. And even if they don't buy anything, just like that kind of interaction, it's freaking awesome. Especially because, yeah. you know, I work from home and I'd like wear PJs every day <laughs> and I, you know, I don't leave the house some, some, like some weeks, like I'll just be fucking like flat chat, like head down work mode. And, uh, yeah. So going out to like this, like these conventions and events and having people, you know, come up and like praise your work is unreal, man. It's so cool. Is that something that you have to, uh, apply for to get like a, a table yeah. or a stall or whatever it is? Yeah. yeah. So you have to, you have to apply and I'm pretty sure it's usually first in best dressed. Um, some of them are more like picked and chosen. Chosen, like uh, the artists, yeah. like if the artists are like, um, if there's a lot of artists applying, they'll go through and sort through which ones make the cut and which ones don't, yeah. stuff like that. So it's pretty cutthroat, but you can usually find a buddy to share a table with pretty easily. If you know if you know other artists that are going, then you can just be like, yo, like I'll split the cost of a table and we can bunk and just like hang out all day. Yeah, cool. Like I'll I'll get cool. coffee in the morning and you can I don't know watch my shit while I go to the bathroom. <laughs> awesome. And it I one thing I was thinking about today when I was trying to work out uh, what what I can ask you is uh, and this would be I'm not sure if it even exists, but within the music scene and you would have seen this is you know there's this sort of uh, a group of you know like-minded people yeah. when they all sort of are associated or linked in, whether it be loosely or not. You know, whether it be mm. doing shows together and touring or just networking and promoting stuff yeah. and whatnot. Is it a similar sort of thing with, with artists? And Oh, yeah, and, dude. Uh, They're yeah. very, like, I know, like, designers from Melbourne. I know, like, comic artists from Melbourne. I feel like, um, yeah, everyone's kind of pretty tight-knit and they all know of each other. Even just uh, designers, like, online. Like there, I, yeah. I have like a, a like some Facebook groups and shit that I'm in of like designers from freaking all over the world. Some of them are you know like just starting out, like need tutorials on Photoshop stuff. Other ones are you know like working with people like Katy Perry and all that shit. Like yeah, so, yeah. there's people from like all walks of kind of graphic design uh, wisdom, and it's yeah, it's pretty tight knit if you're in if you're not a douche. <laughs> If you're not a complete asshat, then yeah, you're in. <laughs> well, I guess that's like anything, yeah. isn't it? Same with, same with the music scene. You you, you tend to uh, distance yourself from from any any dickhead that uh, that pops their head up. Don't, yeah, there's your life motto. Don't be an asshat, and you're in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll I'll quote you. I'll put a a motivational picture of you and put the co and Photoshop it on that's there. Yeah, excellent. awesome. Meme it. <laughs> that's cool. Like with these sort of networks that you have with all these other artists is it like i'm just trying to think of with with musicians you sort of you know you tour together or you yeah. you do trades or you work out ways to co-promote yeah. each other 
whatnot. Is is it a case that you guys are just trading, like whether it be techniques or ways of promoting yourselves yeah. or just you know, contacts or is it similar um, sort of stuff? Yeah, like that, pretty or? similar. Like for it's like similar in the sense of like it's like what you guys do, you like musicians do between musicians, but for it's like what artists do between um, artists, as in graphic artists. Um, yeah. Like for example, I've got friends that I you know handball work to that I wouldn't be able to do because it'd be like a conflict of interest interests, sorry, with um say black craft. Um yep. and yeah, so I've got people that I can like handball work to when people go, Hey man, like you do black craft, can you do this for me in the same style? It's like, well hang on, like I'm their designer, I can't do this. But my friend can, here you go. And then other things like people post up shit for like critiques and comments on our groups and stuff, which are all like privates so nobody can see. And uh, yeah, we usually freely give each other, you know, critiques, comments and like techniques and stuff that they could do to improve. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Once you, once you find like-minded people, it's, uh, yeah, it can be really awesome because then you have kind of like a network in which you can support each other and then help each other out. Yeah, it's like mutually beneficial, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I guess it depends on what sort of circles within the music scene. And I think the metal scene's kind of tight to a degree, but there's still, you know, it's like anything. You, you get elitists that are, yeah. that, uh, you know, are a bit high and mighty about uh, about what they do and they don't want to share yep. or, or help anybody else out. And I'm sure it's the same with yep. uh, graphic design. 100%. As well. yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. exactly right. Like uh, people yeah. that'll, you know, deliver subpar stuff and charge out the ass or uh, <laughs> like people that, you know, have like freaking insane contract clause and stuff for like, I don't know, like a shirt design. Um, just like uh, some people just take it really far. And I don't know, I, b I believe in like, I don't know, as long as the guy is happy and they pay you, like the graphics there's boom, done, next. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. And I mean, look, in the end, the easier that you are to, to work with, then oh, and that's, the man. better, let's see, the word of mouth gets out there, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, like that's, I, I don't want to fucking cause heartache or like, I just don't want to, I don't want to like mess you around. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if yeah. you hit me up, like, I would just be like, yo, what do you need? Give me a brief, give you a sketch, give you a quote, finish it up, done. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Nice and easy, yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, the same with musicians, you know, you get, uh, you get certain bands or certain uh, artists in particular who've got uh, overinflated egos and they're absolutely difficult to deal with. And, yeah. And word gets out there really quickly. Oh, like, yeah. People talk and, like and you know, bands, bad news travels yeah, fast. Yeah, like the yeah. bands that they tour with just coming out and being like, yo, these guys are douchebags. <laughs> Avoid them like the plague. <laughs> like That's it. And then next minute they, they start complaining because they can't get a gig exactly. and they're wondering why. It's, yeah. like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty funny though. Like if you, if you give people respect, they'll give you respect. Like it's not hard. It's not fucking rocket science. <laughs> it's, it's that common courtesy that, exactly. uh, or, you know, Apparently, it eludes yeah. a lot of people. So <laughs> it, it does. It does. That common sense. It's not quite that common. Yeah. Yet, so uh, you mentioned it before, but um, Blackcraft. Yep. Tell me a little bit about that. So basically, uh, we've been working. I'm pretty sure we're coming up to four years now together. Um, but Blackcraft is like basically a yeah a clothing label that these two guys in the states hit me up for. This is Jim and Bobby. Uh, and they, yeah, they had like hundred dollars. They were like living in a garage and they basically said, yo, like we love your work. We can't really pay you right now, but we will pay you. And this was in the stage where I was like still growing my portfolio a little bit, taking on pro bono stuff. And I was like, oh, these guys, they know a lot of people. So, you know what? Fuck it. Like I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. And they were awesome to work with. So I was like, yeah, screw it. Why not? And um, yeah, ever since then, it's just kind of blown up, skyrocketed. And um, yeah, I've been designing with them for fuck, like three and a quarter, three and a half years now, I think. So it's pretty amazing. I mean, I I don't know a great deal about it. I've just been having a yeah. look on the on the website and man, they're They've got they got a shitload of stuff <laughs> far out like man it's it's crazy are you like their sole designer yeah. or they've got a few different people so I'm the only one that does their designs so everything you've seen oh. is like my stuff and it's it's fun to be able to work on stuff like that as well as you know my illustrative stuff 
Yes. Because then, yes. like, if I'm getting, like, sick of illustrating, I'll be like, all right, sweet, like, let's work on some black craft, let's work on, you know, that stuff, and then vice versa, you know? It's, um, I mean, I'm just looking at some of the stuff, and, yeah, some of the designs are really simple, but that's what makes them so good. <laughs> and it must be a breath of fresh air for you to, to just whip out something really, really simple. Like, I'm looking at one that just, on the front, in, like, capital letters, it says, okay, but first say yeah <laughs> and it's it's mad like it looks it looks cool it's it's like you know the way that it's presented it's awesome but it's just it's such a simplistic design See, like the and, thing is so I'll do all the designs but the guys Jim and Bobby they hit me up with like you know ideas and stuff all the time so for example, yeah. that okay, but first Satan was um, like. There's a lot of shirts and stuff going around uh, in like stores in the states and whatever. Like uh, for example, like Forever Twenty One or something. I don't. I don't know where the hell they saw it, but there was a shirt that said okay, but first coffee, and we're like, no, nah, let's uh, spin that and just make it ours. <laughs> And it's uh, it's just fun to be able to, you know, do that kind of shit and just have fun with it, I guess. It must be a breath of fresh air just when you, you know, for whatever reason, you, you want to take a break from doing oh, your yeah. own stuff and then just to do that because it appears to be a pretty different style. Yeah. I mean, it's quite varied anyway with all the different art, but I mean, there's, there's obviously more or less a common theme throughout it all, but it is quite varied in the different different designs yep. so it must be must be cool to break away and, and do some of this stuff yeah dude, it really is it's so like and i'm so lucky to be able to work with you know people that like if all right if i wasn't able to work well with jim and bobby it would be a fucking nightmare but they're like yeah. so chill and so easy to work with and you know if if we're not feeling a design they'll be like nah not feeling it and they won't bullshit and they'll be like no let's change this let's do this um and whereas like a lot of people with you know my thrash wolf stuff will kind of like dance around the topic and be like oh like i don't know what needs to be changed it's like you know what needs to be changed just tell me <laughs> just, just cut the bullshit i don't care how like insulting it is to me or my skill or whatever just tell me what needs to be changed and i'll do it and so yeah, yeah they just get me and i get them and yeah it's, yeah, that's it's cool. pretty. Uh, it's a pretty rad working relationship. I'm very fucking lucky. And um, this might be a cheeky question. You don't have to answer it, but do they do they pay you per design, or do you get a cut per how many items they sell? Um, like they basically just give me a wage, man. So like, I, I, oh, cool. I yeah, I just like work as much as I can on stuff with them, um, yeah. and. Yeah, and like do like touch ups, do mock files, printing files. I'll make all changes we need for production, like sizing, whatever. Um, and then yeah, do new designs on top of that. And they just yeah, give me like a wage. It's very freaking easy, and the guys are rad. They're so That's... yeah, they're chill about all that stuff. I really I mean... hate dealing with uh, all that kind of stuff though. <laughs> So, like, uh, like money and numbers and all that shit's not my forte. I just like doing the work, man. Well, I mean, look, you've got the bonus of bringing in some money for something you love doing. Exactly. So I reckon that's, I mean, that's 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 the dream, man. That's what everyone yeah. everyone strives to get. I mean, a lot of people get lucky and can can actually be creative and do creative things, but to to earn money on top of it is just a bonus. Oh, dude, yeah, that's 100%. cool, man. It's, uh, very envious, <laughs> very envious, man. Very cool. That's awesome. So, um, so between, so you got Blackcraft and then you've got your own Thrash Wolf stuff, and that's where your main sources of income are coming Correct. in. Is there any plans in the future to, I don't know, go in, in another direction again, or is it um, basically what you've got now? You're pretty satisfied, and you're just going to continue on. See, like, I'd like to do a couple of different things. Like, I'd like to, you know, do a couple of maybe like Thrash Wolf like limited release tees like I did a little stint a while ago like a long time ago tried doing thrash wolf clothing and that was with a really good friend of mine but I think we just weren't quite there business wise and I, I don't know it just kind of fell through a little bit so yeah. I want to try and maybe do like custom hats or custom like patches or some shit um, and then I also want to do stuff that can be resold so think like um let's see, like brushes for Photoshop or like little like placeable elements, like, I don't know, like a skull pack or some shit that I can just okay. sell over and over, like do fonts or whatever, just to try and like, try and, you know, diversify my kind of uh, income and just have fun with it. Cause I love doing all that stuff and I do that stuff a lot. So it's just like, why not? 
And the cool thing about doing those packs and whatnot is that you only really have to put them together once. Exactly. And if they're in the right spot, then you can just you forget about yep. that. And that money just is, just keeps coming in if it's in the right yep. right place. It's like yeah, uh, cool. it's like this uh, service that I was invited to use called T Public. Okay. And um, yeah, so basically all you do is you like shoot them high res versions of your designs, and then they throw it on tees, they print them, and they sell them and send them out for you and then they just give you a cut of like you know whatever they make and it's like it's so rad because you can do anything and put it up and if it pertains to you know people's interests then they're just like fuck yeah like done i'll buy this and then you get a cut and you just have to set it and forget it it's so cool that's pretty cool i i always have these crazy ideas for t-shirts we're lucky we've got a guy up here that uh is fairly local to us yeah. and he just does really cheap uh cheap printing and and does like tiny tiny runs for us if we if there's some ridiculous design that we want to try out and test yeah. test the water see what it's like um yeah but it's like to have something that's online where you can pretty much just throw the design up there and then you leave it for someone else to manage yeah. and you know it could be six months later you forget about it and people are still suddenly buying it, yeah yeah that's it yeah for that's sure so, it's like a giant marketplace so people are always searching through the site and stuff and it's pretty cool i think it's um it's definitely definitely the way that a lot of people are going now instead of having you sort of bricks and mortar business yeah. a lot of people just uh establishing themselves digitally and and pretty much spending like we're investing the time to set themselves up and then just leaving it, yeah, giving it a go. Exactly. Just letting it, letting it go after that. That's, uh, I need to get a bit more creative and, and have some shit up somewhere so yeah. I can just earn some, earn some dollars. <laughs> <laughs> dollar, dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, that's really cool. Um, well, look, I won't take up too much more of your time. That's right, um, very, uh, very gracious of, uh, of your time that you've given. Oh, um, I might have to get you back on later on down the track because what I'm going to do is haul the hell out of this uh, episode and get some more people coming your way and uh, <laughs> definitely be uh, definitely be interested to catch up down the track and just see how you're tracking yeah. with, with stuff that you're doing now but also the other things that you want to do down the track. And I think what you're doing, I mean, there's a lot of people that get to run their own business so to speak, mm -hmm. but um, but you know, as you said before, and I was I was imagining and not picturing you in your pajamas, but just the idea of <laughs> you. <laughs> I think about hey, you. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> sweet, sweet, cut off gray marl shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, just the concept of being able to just. Just be at home yeah. in the comforts of your home. You dictate the time that you put in, and that that that, that dictates you what comes yeah. back. That's honestly so cool. that's the hardest part, though. Like, yeah, um, I feel guilty whenever I'm at home and I can't work, or like I'm like if I'm waiting on clients and stuff to get back to me or whatever. Like, I'll feel guilty that I'm not doing more. If you know, or like if I'm like watching TV and stuff, I'm like in the back of my head, I'm like, yo, you could be doing work right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know it's good you have to kind of find a balance like i work my ass off during the day and i chill at night and i uh, rinse repeat and it's been working so with that in mind do you have a, a set routine that you got in place each day just to keep yourself on track um yeah for the main part it's lots of coffee and head down <laughs> and just work yep. i don't know like other than in, in terms of routines it's literally get up work until uh my girlfriend gets home <laughs> and yep. then yep. and then yeah that's about it <laughs> Hey, but, you know, I mean, half the time, the simplistic approach is what's most effective anyway. Oh, I've and got, I like, think notebooks and shit of, like, my tasks and lists, and they're, like, strewn about my table, or, like, my uh, desks and stuff, so. Oh, yeah. Do you, um... Do you have like a daily checklist or anything that you use or have you just got one that you just like your, your overall to-do list of jobs? And yeah, I, I usually, I what I do is I'll write down my client or whatever's name and then just like a brief description of what they're doing and then I'll put down like little notes like waiting on email or waiting on reply or waiting on, you know, final okay before invoice or whatever. That's how I kind of keep track of my stuff. Is that like a spreadsheet that you use? Like a, it's, something that it's you It's literally updating? like a pocket notebook it's 
they're called field notes, and it's okay. you can buy like three of them for like a pack of ten, and it's just like this tiny little pocket notebook that I just scribble lots of shit in. It probably it probably is more effective that the fact that you're actually writing it down as opposed to just typing it on a screen and sort of forgetting about yeah, it. Yeah, it, I find actually like physically writing it down really commits it to my brain so that I actually yeah. remember. Because if I don't, then I'm gonna be hit up in like four weeks, be like, "Yo, is our cover art done?" And I'll just be like, "Shit." <laughs> 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 Cancel everything yeah. else. Uh, I've had that happen a couple of times, and that's when I was like, "All right, I need to get on top of this. Actually, make a note and have a system." So it's kind of my. Yeah, that's system. cool. It's um, I'm fascinated by that stuff because I balance work and and band and and you know as soon as i'm walking out of one world i'm i'm putting the other hat on and you got to try and find a way to stay focused because it's just so easy to to get distracted by so many things and then i know people that work from home yeah and they don't have they don't give themselves set hours they just work whenever stuff comes in so there's no consistency so they'll be working at nine o'clock in the morning and then they'll they'll be working again at three o'clock in the morning and they're all over the shop and their productivity is like shit house <laughs> and they never get anything done on time or properly because they just they've got no there's no discipline and they think that by working at any time on call is you know the most effective way of handling mm. it but i mean look for some people it might work but i can't imagine it being yeah. terribly effective as opposed to just having even like the concept that you had where you get up, you work, you wait until your girlfriend gets home, and then that's it. Well, that's and you just yeah. touch it the next day. Well, it's like if I have like shitloads of stuff to do, I'll be like, "Sorry, like I gotta, I gotta go do this work," and I'll like dive into it more. But that's usually what a normal day is for me. And um, by that stage, I'm usually pretty freaking burnt out, and um, I don't know, like my brain will just stop working and stop thinking of cool stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You gotta recharge. Yeah, I gotta recharge the money maker. <laughs> Actually, that's probably my <laughs> hand, but. <laughs> 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 oh man that's cool that's it's actually i'm really i'm really envious of what you do because it's i think it's something that everyone secretly whether they've actually have discovered a talent or not would just love the idea of being able to work to their own devices and not have to answer to anybody yeah. else you know answer to the man i really you know? i really appreciate yeah. it man and it's like everyone can do it you just yeah you just have to have that self kind of discipline and you have to yeah. find a way to you know obviously make money from home. <laughs> that's it. That's probably that's probably the clean shot. If you can get that and <laughs> that'd be pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, it's cool. It's uh, something that I'm. I think over over the coming months and years, it'll be something I'm trying to tra- transition over to. Oh, so, yeah, uh, but it's it's still trying to work out exactly what that's going to be. But um, I'm I'm well and truly ready to to make a move at some point in the near future. I'm do it. I'm dude. sick of it. Yeah, well, like I, <laughs> like uh, like my mentor said, like he's he's super fucking inspirational with all this shit because everyone looks up to him because he lives. You know, he he lives like the freelance like king life he has like awesome clients he just got hit up to do a ted talk in malaysia like insane wow yeah and it's because he's so good with business but he's also really good with his work ethic yeah if if you're thinking about making the switch and you've got like some money saved up just jump in it with two feet first like it's there's never gonna be a good time to stop work kind of thing like you just gotta do it yeah i've that's that's the way I'm sort of looking at it now, and I think even if you crash and burn, you know, worst case scenario, you'll fi- you can you can find paid work again. You can exactly. be a shit kicker and get money again. It's I mean, but if you never do it, then that's probably the the, the bigger danger. Yeah, than, that's than just gonna eat at the, the back of your freaking mind, man. If you if you're that's like the, just sitting there, like, what if what if I had done this or what if I had done that? You know, you just gotta kind of take the plunge, and if it doesn't work, then fuck it, just get back into another job and. Find something you know that you love doing oh, for sure, and and um, I don't know if you if you're able to tell me, but uh, are you able to say who your mentor is? Uh, yeah, a guy called Darren Yao. He used to be my so he used to be my um, uh, he used to be my university teacher, and I don't know we kind of like hit it off, and this was like years and years and years ago. But I mm. still look up to him. He's still like amazing in terms of you know what he does, the stuff that he puts out. It's really kind of like inspirational. He's an avid believer of not wearing pants while you're working at home which is like, <laughs> fucking spot on <laughs> um, and yeah like he's just really insightful into how like the life of a freelancer works and he's got really good advice to offer that's really cool that's, yeah. that's awesome I, I think um I'm, I'm only just starting to understand or appreciate the concept of uh, 
of, of a mentor. And I know a few people that have, that have got mentors. And initially, the, when I, you know, years ago, when I'd hear the concept being, uh, being spoken about, I go, oh, that sounds really gay, like, you know, yeah. some sort of mentor or whatever. Like, why do you need somebody to, to sort of coach you or, or, tell you, or you know, tell you what to do or whatever? But it's just, it's got nothing to do with that. It's just, oh, and now, so- now I understand what it is. And now I'm like, oh, now I need to find somebody. I've got to, yeah. <laughs> I've got to go search. <laughs> but uh, it, it's really cool. It, it, I just, I can only imagine it would be extremely, like you used the word before, inspirational, but just motivating and yeah. just open your mind and, and push yourself to, to probably limits, that, well, not limits, but to you know areas that you probably never thought you'd be pushing yourself to. Yeah, and that's all you need, dude. You just need to find the drive of like you always wanting to push harder and get better and get bigger and just keep feeding into that. Because if you don't have that, then you've lost the game kind of thing. If you're like, oh, no, I'm happy with where I'm at, then you should just kind of stop because everyone wants to, you know, strive for better. And uh, I feel like I feel like if you plateau, then you're just going to get boring. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people like that. But then again, I, mean, I guess there's, there's people out there who but, but like, are boring. But you know what I they, mean, right? Like, yeah. Like, if, if you're like, oh, all right, like I, I can draw skulls good enough now, I may as well stop learning learning how to draw them better kind of thing <laughs> like it's it should never be like that you, know, you should be able yeah. to you know like you should try and push yourself every time you get the chance kind of thing you know that's what i try and do with everything that i do uh work wise <laughs> well i imagine if there's a few more people with that mindset it'd be certainly a different place because um there's a lot of people out there that just settle for for whatever's just thrown in front of them and there's no real need or effort to to push themselves any further and yeah. there's just no well there's no you gotta have love in what you're doing like you gotta love yeah. what you're doing to be able to be like no like i want to push myself like if you're flipping burgers you're not gonna be like no i want to push myself i'm gonna fucking flip these 10 burgers at once so it's like <laughs> you know what i mean like it's within yeah. context <laughs> uh absolutely absolutely but sam um, i think everybody you know you get a lot of people that sort of just live the mundane life and they whinge about it like they carry on they go you know life sucks or whatever and they complain about or they it's um you know in australia you got that tall poppy syndrome so whenever somebody is uh, showing any glimpses of success. Mm-hmm. Everybody else just shoots that person down, yeah. tries to bring them back down to ground level because, you know, I guess it's the, it's the not, jealousy yeah, thing. They're or, not in their shoes kind of thing. That's it. And these people are miserable, but uh, they don't do anything to help themselves. And a lot of the time they just don't even know what, what their passion is or they got yeah. no, they've never given themselves a chance to sort of break out of their mold. But uh, it's like, honestly, guess, it's like, yeah. that's, that's how I feel about like keyboard warriors that criticize the shit out of bands. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, like you yeah. can have an opinion, but if you're going to be like, this song sucks, fuck your dad. Like it doesn't, <laughs> It's like, all right, cool. What have you done? <laughs> oh, man. I was, I was telling um, someone else the other day about um, constructive criticism. Yeah, such a foreign you know, concept, right? <laughs> oh, it is, man. It is. And, you know, with the power of social media now where everything's so instant, and I think people type before they think, and because you're not face-to-face with somebody, you just, you're even more of an asshole. <laughs> and, and I remember, like, you know, every once in a while we'll post something up and there'll just be this random person out of nowhere. I cannot even, like, and this, say it's on Facebook, yeah. and I'll click on this person's profile to try and work out where the connection is and like i'll have one person that pops up we post say a video clip or whatever yeah. and we'll just get fag <laughs> and and i'll look at a guy cool, ah, funny guy <laughs> and i'm thinking oh maybe this is like a mate or something or someone you know trying to be funny or whatever and then i look and i'm checking this profile and i can't find any link whatsoever and i think this guy legitimately this just called me homosexual <laughs> i produced <laughs> Okay, and you just, okay, man. <laughs> Whatever. And you just look at it and go, I can't even I can't even waste my energy yeah. replying to that or even acknowledging that. I've just gotta let it go. And you just think, what is this guy just bored or does he genuinely hate <laughs> the band that he feels that he has to write that or is he just going through his news feed and that's just popped up so he just decides that well fact. I can't I can't really like I would just love <laughs> to see his thought process like, Oh, these guys suck. I'm going to call him a fag. Yeah, that'll teach him. Like, <laughs> I feel so much better for doing that. It's like, cool, man. Oh, You're freaking man. awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. And like some of the stuff can be so vicious. But And I think when everyone's getting used to social media, I think a lot of people were a lot more sensitive to it. But now because there's just so much of it and people just jump to conclusions and, uh, yep. you know, as far as verbally abuse, well, not verbally, but, you know, abusing yep. people via social media, that it just becomes 
you know, you become desensitized to it and you just end up laughing at majority of the stuff that comes through. Yeah. Even the stuff that's really malicious, you just sort of go like, who are you, you sack of shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I can't waste my time giving you the time of day. Yeah. And, but it's just so much of it online. And uh, But then you see these people out and about, especially if I work out who it is, and you see them at like a gig. Like, and I'll go up and just say, <laughs> hey, man, or you walk past them. <laughs> And they, or they, they spot you and they sort of feel like, they, they, you know, they feel awkward and they come oh. up and they're like, oh, hey man, how's it going? Not thinking that I know who that person is. And <laughs> hey, you're just that totally, fucking douchebag. <laughs> yeah. And it's like totally two-faced. And that's, that's the whole keyboard warrior yeah. mentality is that they, they haven't got the ball to do it in person, oh, but you know, sitting at home in their jocks, you know, uh, you know t- tapping away on the keyboard, getting, getting shitty. So yeah. you need that balance. You need, need those, those people out there I, to make the rest of I look good. I just kind of laugh at that shit, man. Like it's, I find it hilarious, and I know like I, if anyone needs like actually takes that stuff to heart, like just don't, because you know what are you what are you supposed to do about that? Like anyone can do it. I don't know. It's just it just seems like pointless to try and give them yeah the time of day. The way that I look at it now is if we're getting negative feedback on anything, it just means we're doing the right thing because we're obviously getting enough of a reach that people are are annoyed enough that they want to type something. To, to try and piss us off, you know, yeah. if if we were that shit and and that useless, you know, yeah. people wouldn't even waste their time trying to to abuse us or insult us. So, and the more popular anybody gets, the more oh, of course slack you, you <laughs> cop it. So. Just just reply back next time someone says something, anything derogatory. Just be like, hey man, thanks for taking the time. Much love. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Deal with it with complete kindness. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. The power of the power of the heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely fucking troll them back <laughs> that's it that's it awesome man well I'll let you go thank you so much Thanks, dude. and uh, we'll have to catch up some do- sometime down the track and I've, I've uh, I haven't forgotten about the artwork that you did for us a while back I've got it sitting there and uh, <laughs> it, it's gonna get used uh, eventually down the track and I've got a few other ideas but hell yeah I got and don't take this the wrong way but I actually um, I had a bunch of ideas I was gonna hit you up and then I just saw how many bands were using your artwork and I thought Oh, I don't want to jump on the thrash for fan wagon. <laughs> Shit. Because <laughs> you, be- you become trendy, man. Uh, and so, uh, and like Tabra just went nuts. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to hold out for a bit. And I thought, this artwork's so cool. But I thought, no, I'm just going to just gonna leave it. But don't worry, man. I'll, I'll be back. Right. And at least, and I reckon it'll probably work out better because uh, we'll, we'll stretch we'll stretch the love out a bit longer. All right, too easy. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. All right, we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. All good, man. All right, have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. See ya. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Hope you got something out of that. It was uh, actually a lot of fun to talk to Logan. And during the uh, conversation, it was the first time I've ever spoke to him, you know, over the phone or verbally or, you know, through Skype or whatever it is. And uh, I had actually no idea he was from the States. So it was, uh, it's kind of funny how we interact uh, through social media and we don't speak to people and we find out that, you know, something pretty uh, obvious in other circumstances it was not. So it's definitely uh, cool to be able to talk to people and learn a lot more about uh, these people that you interact with uh, through the internet. Yeah, I hope you got something out of it. And I certainly liked where the conversation was going towards the end there about that different or alternative way of uh, earning money and working from home and getting the right path and scheduling your day and and all those great things of of self-development, self-improvement. It's definitely inspiring to to hear of somebody who's just doing so well and doing something that they love and really cap it off, earn a living from it as well. And it sounds like he's definitely going in the right direction with a lot of cool plans in the future. So uh, I urge you to uh, go to the Facebook page or go to my website, check out the show notes, contact Logan through Instagram, Facebook, whatever is on there. Make sure you let him know what you think of uh, this episode, but also let him know, let him know what you think of his artwork. And if there's something that uh, you may actually want his services for, by all means, hit him up. Uh, as you would have no doubt noticed from the conversation, he's extremely easygoing and And from my experience, getting some work done through him, he is extremely easy to deal with. So uh, I can only, I can't recommend him uh, any more than that. So definitely make contact with him uh, if there's something that uh, might be of interest there. Uh, But everything referenced in the uh, podcast will be in the show notes. So please go and check all that out for all those resources. Moving forward, this episode once again was not brought to you by my 9394 upper deck trading card. Uh, which is Sean Kemp. 
card number 305. As promised, and as I've done in an earlier episode when I did another trading card, I'll uh, give you a bit of a rundown of what our mate Sean Kemp's been up to uh, since uh, his heyday with the Seattle Supersonics back in the early 90s or early to mid 90s. So he went to the NBA Finals in, I think it may have been 97. I think I could be completely wrong here. No, it was 96, I believe. Anyway, uh, was there for until about 96, 97, then went to Cleveland. And from there, for whatever reason, well, I'll tell you why. He started suffering, or not suffering, but uh, battling weight problems and just seemed to not really be uh, as enthusiastic as what he had been when he was at Seattle. But uh, he apparently showed up to training camp weighing 275 pounds, which in kilos is 124 kilos. So that's really heavy. I mean, this guy is six foot 10. He's a tall guy, but uh, that's still... That's still one heavy dude. I've just read that he's actually gone to 315 pounds. That was the uh, the exact weight of, of him. So that was 142 kilos. So he was a big, big boy. So apparently he was battling drug addiction and uh, it, specifically cocaine. And he wasn't in, he wasn't with Cleveland for too long. And then went to Portland, Portland Trailblazers. And his play just began to decline significantly from there. He was, he still had problems with his weight and he had cocaine and alcohol issues so and he went to rehab um as well and then from there he went to uh the orlando magic and um i think he didn't play there for too long uh he got let go and then he made a few attempts to sort of come back into the nba after that some promising uh things but he just he missed uh training camps he missed appointments and there was even a stint where he went to italy to to play in their league for a year and uh he did three preseason games and uh didn't go any further than that the, the most interesting thing and i have a chuckle and i shouldn't laugh at somebody else's expense because you know, i'm sure there's a lot of things that have accumulated accumulated to make him get to this point. But uh, it says, by the age of 28, Sean had fathered at least seven children with six different women. By the age of 32, Sean had confirmed 11 children by at least 10 different women. And, and then it says, um, on the 4th of April, 2005, Kemp was arrested in Washington for an investigation of drug possession. Kemp, along with another man, were found with cocaine, about 60 grams of marijuana, and a semi-automatic pistol. He was formally charged with drug possession and pleaded guilty. Kemp was again arrested for misdemeanor marijuana possession in Houston on the 21st of July, 2006. So this very, very talented uh, individual who is just this athletic showman in the 90s, his nickname was the Rain Man. It was just he was just awesome. Between him and Gary Payton, those guys were just incredible, just total showman on the court. Going from there to pretty much down in the dumps. I mean, there must have been a lot of stuff going on to get him in that direction. But I guess in the 90s, there was a lot of uh, a lot of bad boys, a lot of guys in the NBA who just were way too cashed up, couldn't handle their money, um, probably had a lot of bad influences around them and, uh, you know, ended up causing, causing disaster. So anyway, uh, that's my little rundown on Sean Kemp. I might even put a couple of videos up so you can check out uh, some of his uh, some of his highlights from uh, his heyday with Seattle. Finally, before I wrap this up, as always, uh, if you can spare a couple of seconds, get onto the Facebook page, like, share, comment, do all that stuff just to get the activity going on the page. If you're using iTunes, please uh, click those stars and give me a rating and uh, leave me a quick review. It only has to be a few words, nothing in depth. And if you're using uh, any other platform that I'm not aware of and there's any way of uh, sharing or commenting or rating or anything of the sort, uh, please do so. Uh, the more people that I can get tuning into this podcast, the more I can do with it and the bigger I can make it. And uh, I've definitely got a lot of big plans for where I hope this podcast will go, but it will uh, definitely come down to the help that you guys can can give me as well. Regardless, I'll still continue this podcast anyway, but uh, to what extent will definitely determine be determined uh, on how many people are tuning in and uh, what sort of reaction I get. But I'm certainly not complaining uh, where I've got to so far in such a short period of time. The the response and the listenership has been fantastic and I really appreciate everyone uh, just taking the time to to listen and interact and show their support. It just, it means a lot. So please continue to do so. As I said, just a couple of seconds of your, of your time means a lot to me and, and has a massive impact. So thank you very much. I would tell you what the next week's episode is, but at this point in time, I don't know what order they're gonna come out. 
I'm doing another interview tomorrow night and I've got another one, another really cool one the following week. And I've got about five or six pending where, you know, we're just more or less trying to work out a time to get together and have a chat. So a lot of stuff on, on the, uh, on the cards and coming up in the near future. So please continue to tune in. I'm still keeping these at a week at a time for the time being, depending on how much time I can dedicate to it. And I think after the current tour that we're doing, I'll have a bit more time to dedicate and I might be able to increase it to two a week, but it just comes down to how much content I can provide the the amount of time it takes to do the editing, put the blog post up, all the show notes, update all the pages, etc. So um, I'm really at the moment just doing this podcast in between free peri periods of time that I have. So um, I'm managing to keep it all afloat and it's going well so far, but I'd love to be able to up the ante and, and get this a bit more frequent, but uh, that's hopefully in the near future. But anyway, uh, thank you again for everybody. Please get in contact with Logan and uh, pass on the love and uh, anything you can do to support this podcast will be greatly appreciated. Until next week, thank you. You're ready, you're ready, social. You're ready.